This is a demonstration of the Forest Manufacturing Model 236 block saw. We have a lot of different versions of this machine. From the name, you can tell, the vertical blade bandsaw, traveling table. I do a lot of different versions of this machine. The most common out in the field is what we call a fitting saw. It includes special tools and fixtures used by my insulation fabrication customers. They're making specialty insulation shapes to go around things like elbows and T's and Y's and manifolds and valve bodies. All the things in a refinery or chemical plant that need to be insulated that aren't just straight round shapes. So this machine has the fitting saw will come with all the features. This machine is set up for a plastic processor. They're making specialty shape out of plastic. And so I've deleted all of the insulation fabrication pictures, put in some other things. Um, first off, probably most important, this machine has our pneumatic blade tensioning system. That replaces the standard screw over spring blade tensioning mechanism with an air cylinder based system. So the screw over spring is reliable as an anvil. Everybody knows how it works but a lot of times people still set their blade tension wrong because they don't bother to set it correctly or know the correct tension, best done with a blade tension gauge. They just tension it up, get down the spring, thump the blade and say it sounds right. That technique tends to lead to over tension small blades and under tension big blades. And either over or under tension can lead to blade um, life issues. You basically your blade dies young or an under tension blade might lead to um, poor quality cuts. This machine has the upgrade of a pneumatic system. So the pneumatic system uses an air cylinder and a pressure regulator controlled by an air valve to set the blade tension. In the manual there's a chart that says for this size of blade use these many PSI. So you just set the pressure regulator once and you're good. The controls are on the back side. I know you can't see it. If you do want more information about the pneumatic system, I've done a previous video shot from the back side going into all the features and details of the pneumatic blade tensioning system. But for now, just know that there is a valve back here. I flick it, blade goes floppy, flick it back, blade goes tight, and the tension is accurately controlled by the pressure regulator back here that I know you cannot see. Also, this machine has a laser guideline light. So again, click the switch and you get a bright red beam showing where the blade is gonna cut. It does two things for you. First off, it makes it very obvious how to line up a workpiece to cut. Say you've got a workpiece, you've got a line on it and you wanna make a cut on the line. Manipulate the workpiece until the, oh, it shows it really well on this. Manipulate the workpiece until the bright red line shows up on your mark, cut, you're good. You can also use it to make a minimum material loss cleanup cut. Say you've got a workpiece with a jagged edge, you want to salvage it, get a straight edge, but lose as little material as possible, you can eyeball that with the laser. Then I also consider the laser to be a bit of a safety feature. Short version, if you're setting up for a cut and you see the red line, on your hand, move your hand before you make the cut. Normally on machines this size, we do a magnetic motor starter with an overload. This customer, however, wanted some other features. So we have a control panel with a fuse disconnect on the panel. We have a nice blinky uh, green light to tell everyone in the area when the machine's running. I need to tighten that belt a little, I guess. But blinky green light, machine is running. I also have a second set of start-stop controls here. So it's not a huge reach to be making your cut here after you cut two steps, stop. But just for operator convenience, it's kind of nice to have this start and stop button mounted here. Um, more features just real quick. The model 214, pardon me, model 236 is tall. Built with four 14 inch diameter wheels. Running, this allows you to run half inch or three quarter inch blade. Some 
one inch blades are not particularly thick, but pretty much all half inch or three four inch blades are run fine in this machine. These are high speed machines, meaning the blade runs at about 3,000 feet per minute. Contrast that with the speed you might use to cut metal, which might be 300 feet per minute or slower. This runs the blade at 3,000 feet per minute, suitable for cutting foam, plastic, wood, all manner of stuff, basically anything other than ferrous metals. You can sometimes cut aluminum with these machines. We do it from time to time. Another nice little feature, the upper guide is mounted on this adjustable post. The idea here is to lower this guide to just above the top of your workpiece. Just two things for you. First off, it guards the unused portion of the blade, so I can't touch the blade. And it shortens the working blade length. So there's another guide underneath the table. There's this one here. The shorter the distance between the blade guides, the less likely you are to have something that causes a crooked cut. Adjustment. These machines have our crank style guide post socket, so unlock it, turn the crank, lock it back down. Cutting. Really common application is for my customers to be cutting foam. So I've got some, I think this is two pound per cubic foot um, urethane foam, foil back both sides. pretty much just goes away in front of the bandsaw blade. But this, but this is foam. My grandmother could cut this with a butter knife. Not as quickly, not as accurately, but she could. I also have a lot of customers cutting big plastic things. This is a mat they meant to be laid out in like a field. Say you're doing a music festival or construction site and it's muddy, you want a solid surface. I have a customer who manufactures these and reconditions these, also recycles these, and he needs to be able to cut them. So, again, traveling tables are great for making straight, accurate cuts. This is actually kind of heavy. Lift with your legs. Oh, quick note about the table. This is a traveling table, but you don't see anything like rails. We call this our cantilever design table. It works a lot like a desk drawer slide in that the rails effectively are mounted to the underside of the table, the bearings are on the saw head. It makes a very nice, tidy to work around saw. Um, for very heavy work pieces, very large table, or very large tables, we also do a rail mounted table. They can carry a much greater load, but the rails are frankly a little bit in the way. You can bang your knees into them, you can back a fork truck into them. They're just, and of course they're more expensive, so they're just not as uh, tidy. This is a very easy to work around machine with this traveling table cantilever style. So, it'll cut plastic too. Not quite as quickly. It's still pretty quick. Nice, clean, rapid cut. If you have any questions or would like to discuss a specific application for any of our saws, please feel free to call or email us at Forest Manufacturing. Thank you for your time.